Greetings all, Chunks of Earth here. How are you? I'm okay. Got a nice shiny new haircut. Isn't that nice? From the hair I still have left. Well, my wife's family is at it again. Her brother-in-law, who's a staunch GOP supporter, even in the face of absolute insanity and ignorance, has decided to respond to a post she had on Facebook about a solar company. And I'll put a link in the bottom of the solar company that's you know, looking for support. So when, when my wife posted this comic, which I'll try to include the comic as well, about how if you want oil, well, they own the wells, if you want um, nuclear, they own the mines. If you want coal, they own the mines for that too. But if you want solar, well, they don't own the sun, so that's not feasible. And it's a, it's a humorous comic, and it does seem to resonate with a lot of people. But this guy's response was that solar is not feasible. And he started to list all these archaic 30-year-old ways that solar was not feasible including that the batteries are too big and you can't place them anywhere and that the panels only last 10 years and the amount of silicon needed will make this price of computer parts skyrocket because silicon is in the chips and uh, that nothing will grow under solar panels and just this this abject ignorance meanwhile had nothing to report about how the oil, oh, he also said that the, they would, they would uh, destroy the environment mining for all that silicon. And, uh, and that was a big concern to him, the environmental impact. But he was supporting gas and oil. And then he brought up another point of, of why it's not monetarily feasible. It's too expensive. Well, let's see. The U.S. government right now is stationed in a lot of Arab countries that contain oil and they're there not for our safety certainly because none of these people are attacking us they're there to protect the oil and gas industry's interests so your tax money is going to fund security for private entities and they enjoy billions of dollars in tax breaks and incentives so isn't it numerous that somebody would say that the price of solar technology is so expensive well the government doesn't support it and when it did with Solyndra that was a, a ruse uh, started by George Bush giving them money but the oil and gas, gas industry don't want any competition so they tanked it they tanked any sort of uh, market for it they tanked any level of of desire for it and support for it and then you wonder why they went bankrupt I mean I'm sure there's other issues involved but mostly it was a it, it was a a lack of support from our own government and a concentrated attack from the oil and gas industry that is keeping the solar and wind and tidal energies at the lowest level, almost non-existent. And a few of you know that I've spoken in, uh, in front of council chambers on support of a wind project not too far from me, and it was approved. So little by little, it is catching on. But how people that support the GOP have no issue with hydraulic fracking destroying the quality of water uh, aquifers catching on fire when it comes out of your tap and the disgusting idea of a, of a well right next to your home that's okay and oil derricks in the gulf is fine but we don't want solar panels and and wind farms out there because they're they're too expensive and just it just bugs me that and he's out of work he's been out of work uh, so why is this guy sticking with the same old poor arguments in support of the future something that could create hundreds of thousands of jobs across the nation and put him back to work because he was um, into electrical engineering he wasn't an engineer but he was into making circuit boards and, and things like that small electronics he would be put to work 
but he's still fighting it. And I just, it's hard for me to not be frustrated and it's hard for me to care and to fight to help people that are so stupid that they continue to fill in the hole with dirt and bury themselves rather than admit that they could be wrong or that information has changed over time and been modified so that now things are are different um, I mean he needed to be reminded that the first thing President Reagan did was rip the solar panels off of the White House that Jimmy Carter put up there and began the, the corporate takeover of the US by the oil and gas industry the fast food corporations the the uh, big pharma and big insurance I mean why do you think why do you think there's no health care because the insurance company would lose money they'd get a lot more policies but people would be taking better care of themselves and they would have less emergency surgeries which brings me to Mitt Romney's newest plan that we have health care in this country all you have to do is call up and an ambulance will stop by and take it right to the hospital where you'll get the best of care and you don't have to pay for it right the emergency rooms are free free for those who need them ambulance ride costs five thousand dollars the emergency room for a couple of days could run you up to a hundred thousand dollars depending on how it is to stabilize you and yes the American taxpayer does pay that and he thinks it's socialism but if we all had health care the individual premiums would be lower because everybody would be chipping in something and there would be fewer emergency room visits and fewer emergency surgeries because people wouldn't wait to the last minute before having problems with their pancreas their appendix and, and I mean you still have broken arms broken legs and and things like that I mean, it would free up the emergency room I just I'm fascinated and I'm angry I'm really angry those are the two things that I, I wanted to complain about that that I really don't understand the GOP mentality and, and I, I don't I try I try so hard I mean I could I could fight and say that well Mitt Romney meant when the plane was on the ground why you don't have pop-out windows or, or something but, but I don't think that's what he meant and why didn't he clarify it I, I don't know it seems like there are just a low percentage of people that really give a crap about everybody and not just themselves and a larger percentage of people have no interest in anything but themselves and then claim that's the American way selfishness has been had selfishness over socialism profit over people um, I uh, one last thing George W Bush and Mitt Romney both graduated Harvard Law School now when you hear people scary people like Rick Santorum who's got three degrees I believe uh, and he says that the universities are filled with elitist professors and and President Obama's a snob for wanting everybody to have a higher education but who tanked the economy the people that graduate from the Ivy League universities are the ones that are taking advantage of policies and becoming incredibly wealthy based on predatory parasitic behavior on the rest of America so I think those universities need to be investigated and some sort of correction should be made at what those courses are that don't teach you good business practices or best business practices they teach you how to get in victimize and then get out because where is Mitt Romney's money not floating around here in the States it's not it's not supplying anything oh and last thing stop with the campaign ads I already know who I'm going to vote for. There's only three to five percent of the populace that's going to vote for anybody, and it's so overblown that you're not going to convince these people with these stupid attack ads. I mean, the only thing you've done is use the money that people wanted to give you in support. You haven't done anything to help anybody with except for the commercial manufacturers and the TV stations that it runs on. Stop it! Stop it! It's enough. We get it. Everybody else is bad, but you. And if both sides say it.
it, it makes me extremely upset. So I just turn it off. I turn it all off. And I want you to turn it off as well. Not me, but them. Let them know. Enough. Is anything, I said this before in a previous video. What can anybody say that'll switch your vote from either Obama or Romney? Some people are, like 2 million people are voting for Jill Stein. Good for her. I love Jill Stein. I would vote for her too. But I don't believe that that a third party walking in with the greatest ideals is going to do any better in Congress than the Tea Party and the entrenched Dems. That they we're just too divided. We have to start from the ground up. We have to get people involved that are, are of like mind in, in the, I don't want to say earlier positions, but the lower, the, the more important local levels of government. And then little by little, as they do more and more, they'll reach higher levels, get elected to Congress, and then start doing bigger and better things. Uh, I'm a big fan of Bernie Sanders, and I'm not going to apologize for it. If he's a socialist, then I'm a socialist. Because it's not about the fascist theocracy that we have right now. It's about the spread of information and the, the ability to let everybody f fill their brain with knowledge and then contribute that knowledge back to society so that everything gets better. It's not about wealth distribution. But wealth distribution happens when you take from the poor and give to the rich. That's capitalism. But if you take from the rich and give to the poor, that's socialism. There it is. Believe in the guy that changes his mind depending on what time of day it is. I'm Chunks of Earth, and so are you. Please vote.